The circulatory system is composed of the heart and the blood vasculature, the arteries and the veins. Arteries carry blood away from the heart, and veins carry blood back to the heart. Circulating blood supplies cells throughout the body with oxygen and removes waste carbon dioxide. Oxygen is absorbed into the bloodstream through tiny air sacs in the lungs called alveoli. As oxygen diffuses in, carbon dioxide moves out and is exhaled. The heart is a muscular organ that functions as a double pump to control blood flow. The heart of an adult male is slightly larger than that of an adult female. On average, a normal adult heart is about the size of a fist and weighs approximately 300 grams, less than one pound. The exterior of the heart has a conical shape. The interior of the heart is divided into four hollow chambers enclosed by a layered wall. The heart has a right and a left side, each side with two chambers, an atrium and a ventricle. The right and left sides of the heart work in coordination to pump oxygenated blood throughout the body and deoxygenated blood to the lungs. The heart of a healthy adult beats about 60 to 70 times a minute to keep blood constantly moving. Within the thoracic cavity, there is a thin sac known as the pericardium that encloses and protects the heart. With each contraction of the ventricles, blood is pumped out of the heart. Stroke volume is the amount of blood a ventricle pumps out in one contraction. Cardiac output is the volume of blood that each ventricle ejects every minute. To find the cardiac output volume, multiply the number of heartbeats in one minute by the stroke volume. At rest, the cardiac output for an average adult male is about 5.25 liters, 4.9 liters for an adult woman. Cardiac output increases with physical activity, rising to a maximum that may be four to seven times greater than the resting output. This difference between resting and maximum output is known as cardiac reserve. Heart rate and stroke volume are regulated by the autonomic nervous system and by hormones in the bloodstream. Other factors such as age, weight, and physical fitness also influence cardiac output. The heart has four hollow chambers, the left and right ventricle and the left and right atrium. Each chamber has a different function. The right atrium receives oxygen-depleted blood and empties it into the right ventricle. This blood then flows to the lungs for gas exchange. Oxygenated blood from the lungs enters the left atrium and empties into the left ventricle. From there, it flows out of the heart into the arteries of systemic circulation to distribute oxygen throughout the body. The four heart valves control the flow of blood through the heart by opening and closing the heart chambers in a coordinated sequence. The two valves located between the atria and the ventricles are called the tricuspid and mitral valves. These valves facilitate the flow of blood as it moves into the ventricles from the atria. The other two valves are the aortic and pulmonary semilunar valves. These valves prevent the backflow of blood into the segment it just exited. Each of the four valves is composed of flaps called leaflets, or cusps, which prevent backflow of blood in the wrong direction. The heart wall is composed of several layers. The three layers of the heart wall are the epicardium, the myocardium, and the endocardium. The outermost layer, or the epicardium, is also known as the visceral pericardium or the innermost layer of the pericardium. It covers the heart, wraps around the roots of the great blood vessels, and adheres the heart wall to its protective sac. The middle layer is called the myocardium. The myocardium is responsible for the heart's pumping action. Its strong muscle tissue makes powerful, continuous contractions possible. This thick layer performs the bulk of the heart's work. The endocardium is the inner layer of the heart wall, lining the heart's interior structures, the chambers, valves, and papillary muscles. The endocardium is continuous with the lining of the blood vessels that attach to the heart. Together, these three layers of the heart wall 
aid contraction and relaxation as the heart pumps. Cardiac muscle, which is found only in the heart wall, contracts constantly to pump blood throughout the body. The heart wall is composed of three layers. A thin layer called the epicardium, or visceral pericardium, forms the outermost part of the heart wall. This layer adheres the heart to the pericardium, a sac of tissue that protects the heart from friction as it beats. Beneath the epicardium lies the thick cardiac muscle of the myocardium. The myocardium is responsible for the heart's pumping action, making powerful continuous contractions possible. This striated tissue contracts involuntarily in response to signals from the heart's own conduction system. Beneath the myocardium lies the endocardium, which forms the innermost layer of the heart wall. The endocardium lines the heart's internal structures and is continuous with the lining of blood vessels that attach to the heart. Together, these three layers of the heart wall aid contraction and relaxation as the heart beats. The heart's conduction system regulates the electrical impulses that make the heart beat. An impulse begins in a bundle of nerve tissue called the sinoatrial, or SA node. The impulse makes the atria contract, and blood empties into the ventricles. Next, the impulse travels to the atrioventricular, or AV node. It passes through the bundle of His, the bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. As the impulse reaches the ventricles, it triggers a contraction there, and the heart ejects blood. As blood moves through the circulatory system, it puts pressure on the walls of blood vessels. Blood pressure is the amount of force put on blood vessels. It is caused by the blood flow generated by the heart as it pumps, and the resistance that blood encounters as it moves through the enclosed vessel. When the heart contracts, blood is pushed out into the arteries. This force pushes against the vessel wall, making blood flow faster under high pressure. When the ventricles relax, the vessel walls push back and blood flow slows down, resulting in lower pressure. The constant pumping of the heart maintains blood pressure and supply throughout the body. Blood pressure is used as a measure of normal cardiovascular function. The point of highest pressure when the ventricles are contracting and the pressure is highest in the arteries is called systolic pressure. The point of lowest pressure when the ventricles are relaxed and the semilunar valves are closed is called diastolic pressure. Blood pressure is commonly recorded by measuring both systolic and diastolic pressures. The average systolic pressure is 120 millimeters of mercury. The average diastolic pressure is 70 to 80 millimeters of mercury.